Welcome to Our Appalachia. My name is Phil Kahn. I'm your host for this series, and as you know, we've been discussing the heritage and the culture of the Appalachian region around us. Today, we have not only an authority on settlement schools and other settlement institutions in the Southern Mountains, this happens to be a close friend of mine, Lauren Kramer, who's from Berea, Kentucky right now. Lauren is on the staff of Berea College, but Lauren and I go way back. I guess we were in the same dormitory together for several years, Lauren. Yeah. We were in Bingham Hall, and we, that's it. We got it started. That's right. That was at the <laughs> time we were both students at Berea College. Since that time, Lauren has completed a master's degree from Antioch College and has been involved in a wide variety of social service activities in the Southern Mountain region. Now, Lauren, you tell me that while you were heavily involved in being executive secretary for a consortium of settlement schools and other institutions, that much of your work right now is with an operation at Berea College called Students for Appalachia. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I understand this program involves Berea College students in doing social service projects yeah. in the area around Berea, Kentucky. Yeah, that's, that's right. Community outreach work uh, in the neighborhoods around Berea. Right. Well, today we're going to talk about the settlement institutions in the Southern Mountains. I feel that this is a very important part of our heritage in the region, particularly our educational heritage, and there are many other services that have been rendered to settlement institutions over the years. Why don't we back up and let me ask you what a settlement institution by your definition is. In other words, what type of operations were conceived as settlement institutions and what was the mission, the rationale for a settlement institution in the Southern Mountains? Uh, definition is really hard to come by, Phil, but uh, I think it's fair to say that all of the Schools and institutions we'll be talking about today have been private institutions. Um, all of them have been anxious to uh, meet a need within their local community, and in this case, all of them uh, have been in the rural areas of southern Appalachia right. in the mountain region. So uh, that's sort of a general framework that we start with. Now, as far as activities and needs that they meet, um, the initial needs, of course, were basic education uh, in the rural areas. Uh, there were no public schools for many years. Matter of fact, the South and the mountains uh, certainly didn't have fully full-fledged public education until after Second World War right. uh, throughout. And so until that time, there, there necessarily had to be a variety of other um, uh, organizations and groups and individuals right. providing services for schools, for health services, for meeting human needs of different sorts. So many of these settlement schools provided the first real educational opportunity in the counties or the areas they serve. That's correct? certainly true. That's certainly true. For instance, uh, um, uh, Uncle Saul Everidge in uh, Knott County, Kentucky, walked uh, 22 miles over to Hazard to ask the ladies that were uh, leading a workshop, a summer workshop over in Hazard, to come over and start some learning in his part. Right. And uh, they came over and started, uh, as a result of his invitation, a Heinemann Settlement School, which is... I guess the term settlement, then, in a sense, connotes the fact that it's individuals from outside an area trying to bring educational opportunities or health care opportunities or other social services to an area. Is that correct? Well, agree? I think it's not accurate to say that it necessarily denotes from outside the area because a few of the settlements have been initiated and uh, continue uh, from uh, resources and uh, leadership from within their own locales. Right. Uh, one that comes to mind immediately is uh, Oneida Institute, which is still a strong uh, uh, Baptist boarding school right. and uh, is serving a very real need mm -hmm. as, as far as education is concerned. Uh, it was started by a local fellow, uh, uh, Mr. Burns of the Mountains, and uh, continues to this day as, as a, a leader in this type of um, boarding school right. education. I guess many schools that are now viewed as four-year liberal arts colleges, schools like Berea College or maybe Union College, Cumberland College, Alice Lloyd College. I don't know which ones would have been considered settlement schools in their origins and which would not have been, but is there 
any significance between the term settlement school and the level of educational opportunity not the level i think probably more accurately the settlement school or settlement institution has a specific concern and interest in its local neighborhood i see uh... whereas most colleges uh... from the beginning drew from a wide area right and uh... while Again, it depends on your definition. Because some settlement can, institutions call themselves colleges from the outset, I suppose. Uh, or they generally the, call settlement schools the by very, that name. The very first, uh, what we might call a settlement school, was uh, Washington College, which is now Washington College Academy, down in Jonesboro, Tennessee. And what date did you give me for its origin? 1796 it began. Right. Shortly uh, after the Revolutionary yeah, War. Yeah, it, uh, it got an early start, as a matter of fact. Right. Um, Hazel Green Academy uh, started in the 1880s, mm -hmm. uh, locally here, or nearby. Um, several of them started right around the turn of the century, mm -hmm. and Hindman and later Pine Mountain, and, uh, well, a whole lot of them started in the first quarter of this century. Right. Uh, so it was to uh, try to reach out and, and meet the particular needs that, that uh, were, were found there, and in most cases, the the uh, leadership and the resources for initiating them happened to come from outside the region, right. but in some cases that wasn't true. And uh, whatever the the source and and power behind it, there was a, a strong sense that this is our community and right. we must draw on the potential and the resources within right. this community to make the most of it. And we've mentioned the outside assistance, or at least persons from outside coming to a region to offer what they had within a settlement that they came to love and call home. What were some of the organizations, or I guess churches, that were actively involved in establishing settlement schools? Well, you touched on uh, the source of many of them. Uh, the churches started quite a few of these. Uh, the Presbyterians were one of the earliest. What were some of their schools in eastern Kentucky and maybe East Tennessee? You well, mentioned, of course, Washington College. Yeah, Washington College. Um, Buckhorn uh, School was one of the ones in Kentucky. I think Cross Nor down in West Cross North Nor, Carolina. I believe, was Presbyterian. That's correct. Right. Uh, the uh, Methodists have uh, established several institutions. Uh, Redbird Mission is the largest and probably best known, right. uh, and it's quite a complex of services. It has a high school, uh, four grade schools, and uh, a hospital, a, a large crafts program, an economic development program. It's rather extensive. Right. Now, you right. mentioned the term mission, and some of these settlement schools refer to themselves as missions. Does this merely mean that they wanted to minister to the need or provide needs of a wide array in the localities where they were established? Or was there some, what you might call, evangelistic zeal that accompanied book learning? Yeah, well, uh, I think it's fair to say with, in, with all the cases of the church-supported schools, there was evangelism with it. Uh, the, the initial thing uh, in all cases that I'm aware of was the, was the, the three R's, and right. uh, it went from there. But associated with them, along with the, the church organizations, uh, Church of Christ or Reformed Church or uh, the Methodists or the Congregational or Baptists or Presbyterian or whatever group it was, um, they obviously had uh, spiritual needs right. to minister to. And a sense of Christian discipleship. That's right. Even That's in right. providing educational opportunities. That's certainly true. Right. I think it's fair to say, though, that there, there might be classified three different types of settlement institutions now. The mission schools uh, would be one classification, which are specifically church-related uh, and interested in um, the the very specific spiritual uh, and perhaps uh, um, uh, <laughs> church dogma right. perspective. Uh, then there were several that, well, two come to mind right now that could be called uh, settlement schools in, in the most direct sense in that they sort of pattern themselves after uh, Jane Addams' Hull House philosophy right. of, of drawing on the, the cultural 
uh, uh, qualities within the community and sharing and exchanging these for the betterment of all. Now, obviously, all of these settlements did some of that, but right. then s a couple specialized in that. And I think Hyman Settlement School uh, in um, much of its history has been uh, true of that, and the Pine Mountain Settlement School uh, is certainly true of that. A uh, third style has been what we might call the folk school philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the folk school as, as a philosophy was borrowed from the Scandinavians. Uh, it worked ex extremely well to uh, pull together uh, a pride and uh, self-development within the communities in Scandinavia, and so the idea was uh, here's a, a style that might work here in this country. Obviously, it's taken a different form, which necessarily would have to be. We aren't the same as any other country. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, the two that are still in a, uh, around... Um, These are of the folk school of the, approach. Of the folk school approach are very different in, in how they ended up tackling this. Mm -hmm. The John C. Campbell Folk School down in Brasstown, North Carolina, um, does a great deal with, with the... Uh, mountain uh, folk arts mm -hmm. with crafts, with music, uh, with dance and drama, and with farm skills and this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. This has been their focus, and uh, they continue to do that, although it's shorter term courses mm -hmm. than it used to be. You do have, then, among the settlement institutions a wide variety of styles or philosophies, you might say. Very Some are more inclined different. to embrace and champion the cultures they found yeah. and try mm -hmm. then to offer additional things for right. maybe outside cultures. Some were more set on maybe changing values and lifestyles. Yeah. Yeah. I That's guess right. it's accurate to say then that there were some schools that felt the best hope for the region was to make the region more like mainstream America. And yeah, that's certainly true. And it's these true. schools yeah. have sometimes <coughs> been criticized for trying more to de-Appalachianize folks so far as either their religious dogma or their values than working within the culture they found. Yeah, it's, but it's you find that you can't generalize. I, I think it's fair you can't generalize and, it, and it's partly because each of these institutions has gone through a variety of changes and transition as times change in the mountains. The mountains have not been static either, right. <laughs> which is uh, a part of the exciting thing of the culture, I think. Um, and uh, I might mention the, the other uh, present uh, folk school uh, is the um, uh, Highlander uh, Education and Research Center in East Tennessee, which does its style through local workshops, drawing people in from a particular perspective and need to talk with each other and figure out how is the best way to, to cope, to, uh, to develop, to go from here. To, to meet the particular needs, whether it's, it's labor needs or whether it's uh, human relations needs or whether it's how to uh, deal with, with uh, landowners from outside the region or whatever it is. And so well, Highlander that's, that's is a different involved style. in working from the inside out, so to speak, so yeah. far as helping people within a culture to cope with other groups with whom they come in contact. With whom they come in contact, Okay. Yeah. In my opinion, certainly, the settlement schools have left a valuable legacy in that, as you pointed out, in many cases, the first educational opportunity right. was provided by these settlement schools. Of course, I'm already making the assumption that being able to read and write is a virtue, but I guess I will persist in that. I think it's <laughs> probably fair these days. Right, right. <laughs> okay, but you're talking of settlement schools being developed at a time before there were public schools or before they had sufficient resources to serve the extremities mm -hmm. from a county seat? Mm -hmm. Which, were there actually oh. counties at the turn of the century where there were no public schools whatsoever? In the mountain region, I'm not aware of any. I, I haven't done a extensive research on this, but uh, to my knowledge, there, there was not any, uh, certainly there wasn't extensive uh, counties that that had their own school mm -hmm. systems at that point. And uh, uh, so, especially in these communities, mm -hmm. which tended to be uh, more isolated than others, mm -hmm. these were the sources of, of uh, 
development self development and education and this sort of thing so seventy five one hundred years ago it was a settlement school in the county are no school in many cases that was quite true now that leads i guess to the next observation these schools were set up off times maybe most of the time as schools where individuals came and lived on campus and intended to room and board there is that true in several cases in several cases that's true on the other hand even those that had excellent boarding facilities uh, never held their uh, their services solely to again they were they were serving to a local community but that can be defined as a village or as a county right. or really as a multi-county area i guess in although some although for the most part it was in the early days mm -hmm. uh, because of transportation problems it was pretty local right. it was pretty local and so every single one of uh the settlement institutions uh service to the immediate neighborhood right. which did not uh, often did not require boarding facilities um, Obviously, the time for travel made it so that some needed that, mm -hmm. and so that was a natural thing to take part at the same time. But now we're talking about educational opportunities that would be considered today elementary up through secondary when we talk mm -hmm. about the basic programs of I think settlement that's fair schools. To say. Okay, and there were settlement schools like Pine Mountain mm -hmm. had facilities, of course, for rooming and boarding. Mm -hmm. Were individuals coming from counties other than Harlan, I assume? Mm -hmm. to Pine Mountain Settlement School, is but, that correct? But neighboring counties mostly. Right. Uh, seldom uh, beyond uh, 75 miles. So the whole philosophy was a matter of digging in yes. with a county or certainly a limited geographical area right. and rendering a service there. Yeah, that and you've already made the distinction the between that and the concept that many four-year colleges began with, which was to bring in selected individuals from mm -hmm. a much mm -hmm. broader area. Mm -hmm. And one could certainly argue that uh, many of those colleges have, have met the, most of the criterion that we have talked about so far, as far as service and local uh, uh, orientation and this sort of thing, as well as drawing in from the outside. So it's all in your definition, mm -hmm. really, I think, Bill. Mm -hmm. Definitions are more fun. You bet. <laughs> right. You can work those all day long. Yeah, right? yeah, you can right. second guess each other that's a long sure. time with different definitions and rhetoric. Yep. That's for Let's sure. talk about the role of settlement schools today. Mm -hmm. With the coming of public education in eastern Kentucky, and of course a lot of people argue how good our public education is to this day, but certainly... Certainly we have better education than we did at the turn of the century. We yeah, not only have, about that. Right, we not <laughs> only have elementary and secondary schools, they are compulsory by yeah. state law. Mm -hmm. So the notion of going to school is not only common, it is mandatory. Right, right. So that being the case, where have settlement schools found themselves? What does a school like Pine Mountain Settlement School in Cumberland or near Cumberland in mm -hmm. Harlan, Harlan County, County. Mm -hmm. or a school like Heinemann Settlement School, what have they done? How have they continued to exist? And how many settlement institutions have fallen by the wayside with changing times? Okay, I think it's fair to say a goodly number have fallen by the wayside, partly for, well, there's a variety of reasons. I, th I think the uh, since the Second World War, and the coming of public education has made a major impact. And, well, the mountains have changed a great deal uh, since the Second World War because of uh, different perspectives and um, travel opportunities and technology. You know, the whole thing has is, is, is made basic changes in our lifestyle. Um, obviously, the settlements uh, had to change, too, mm -hmm. many of them. There are a few, as, as we've mentioned, Hazel Green Academy and Washington College Academy and Oneida Baptist Institute and uh, several others that continue the original mandate that they their uh, uh, sponsors had uh, set out. But uh, now, of course, they've come to be an alternative to public education, not the only education not, in an area. Yeah, that's certainly true. Okay, so the ones that have changed, uh, as you point out, some have not been able to continue. Uh, and because their original purpose was no longer needed, they felt there wasn't a need to continue. Others have looked around within the same setting to see what uh, is not being accomplished at this point by uh, the state, by any other form of government or other agency, and try to dig in there. Okay, Pine Mountain Settlement School has moved into a, a quality environmental education program after 
leaving the school orientation, the public school orientation uh, or private school orientation. They are doing a fine job working with groups from preschool through graduate student mm -hmm. level in uh, learning about the environment, the impact man has on the environment, and uh, all of the in-betweens in that, uh, a quality program. Heinemann Settlement School has, uh, instead of boarding students, Heinemann Settlement School now hires some, uh, several, about eight teachers who uh, provide um, the um, extra uh, inspiration in several areas, art and music and 4-H, uh, uh, agricultural skills, in other words, along this line. They also have workshops and conferences uh, that they can provide at their center, uh, literature workshops and, and music uh, workshops, this sort of thing. So uh, those are two examples. I'd like to mention the uh, Appalachian South Folklife Center mm -hmm. at Pipestem, West Virginia, right. because this is one that has focused on the special qualities of the local culture in, in uh, uh, well, in the region and especially in their area of, of West Virginia. And uh, their whole program uh, centers around that now. Um, so the, the changes continue, I guess, right. but there's always a need. Right. I've heard of some situations where a settlement school has either sold its facilities or gone under contract with the county system and has become little more than a very picturesque public school with a mm -hmm. colorful heritage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there cases of that now, or is this pretty much a transitional situation? Right at the moment, there aren't many cases like that. Most have transisted. <laughs> right. Uh, They've either Pine Mountain Settlement School right. went through that stage. It was a part of Harlan County School System. That's right. At, time. Uh -huh. okay. at one time, after it no longer had its own private boarding school, and before it started the environmental education program, mm -hmm. so uh, that that can be a an important role still because they pr provide enrichment that the county school won't provide, right. and continue good education. Mm -hmm. I'd like to. Uh, point out that, that there are still uh, what I think three important uh, values and needs for settlement institutions mm -hmm. in, in general. Number one, being private uh, and being small and having their own uh, resources. They are able to be innovative, they are able to be flexible in program, try things, uh, uh, shift gears, mm -hmm. do this sort of thing that the state system, that agencies just can't do. Mm -hmm. And they provide a very important role in that sense. Okay, in a way, of course, what you're describing, before you go on to two and three, uh -huh. you're describing the distinction in higher education between private schools and public schools to a degree. Mm -hmm. I think and I certainly it. with the resurgence of private elementary and secondary education, mm -hmm. either church-related or mm -hmm. not church-related, mm -hmm. You're really describing a distinction that is coming to exist there. Okay, that's uh, my second point, okay, is that, is that um, being independent mm -hmm. <laughs> and therefore being able to um, set their own standards, they are able to uh, uh, set a, an environment based on certain values. Now, sometimes we don't always agree with what values they choose, and therefore we don't uh, fit into this particular one, we might this particular one, but uh, whether it's the Christian values or values towards the environment or values towards uh, workers relating to managers or whatever the values are, they are able to establish values and, um, and go forward mm -hmm. uh, on those principles in a way that the, right. the, uh, the state is not able to Sometimes do. in the public sector you wonder if you're not being asked to be without values yeah. because you have to be Obvious all things to all people. That's right. Obviously right. there are values in the public sector too, Certainly. but, but uh, the public sector is more enclosed in that right. area and not as free to... The values are spelled out for you in the law that's, rather than being that's certainly kind true. of an inner compulsion, I guess. That's certainly time. true. So that's a real role that these uh, smaller independent uh, institutions can offer. And finally, I think it's fair to say that um, uh, because they're small, uh, and uh, I guess because they're partly because they're on a very low budget, and therefore anyone who is there is there because he cares to be there, right. and not just for the job. 
they're able to be on a much more person-to-person -person basis mm -hmm. than many of the larger institutions mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, agencies just right. from the nature of them can be. They are very personable and very one-to-one -one related. I guess also a settlement school is into a philosophy of life, you know, a matter of commitment beyond the paycheck at the end of the month. That's exactly that is hard right. to capture in certain public situations. Yeah, it's a combination of, of principles one starts with and service right. orientation. Right. And, and then take that into the arena of caring for people and uh, learning from uh, right. people that with whom you work is, uh, is an opportunity. Not well, certainly, just the, the way you see it, there will be a role for settlement schools for many, many years to come. It, Tell I me hope so. <laughs> about another institution or two aside from schools. We're talking mainly about settlement schools, but we mentioned coming in that you consider the facility in Haydn, that we're well aware of, uh, Frontier Nursing, Frontier Service, Nursing yeah. Service, to be a settlement institution. Yeah. Now, this, of course, could be considered educational, but it's really health care for the most part. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's health care, but especially since they have such an excellent program in midwifery and uh, training of nurses that uh, it certainly is educational. And one of their key purposes for being is uh, health uh, prevention, uh, uh, ill health prevention, which is public education, public health education, and they've been doing it low-key and grassroots for years and years right. and years. Um, I think it's certainly fair to say that that is uh, within the definition of, of uh, uh, the settlement school idea, or settlement institution, certainly, and they are providing a unique service, as we all know, right. uh, in our region. Well, Lauren, I'm going to thank you and once again tell our audience that we've been talking to Lauren Kramer, a good friend of mine, and as you can tell, a very knowledgeable individual. And Lauren has brought to us tremendous insight into the whole role of settlement schools and other settlement institutions in the development of the Appalachian region. So thank you, Lauren, and join us again next week as we take up another interesting aspect of the heritage and culture of our Appalachia. Thank, Thank you, Phil. Appreciate being here.